Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Mushroom Kingdom Championship 2018. Every year, all 18 proud enemy obstacle nations come together and host a tournament to find out which one of them is the best one. But before we are able to finally find out which enemy is the best enemy and will win the grand finals, our 18 starters first need to make it through the semi-finals. The Mushroom Broadcasting Union decided to change the format of the semi-finals a little bit this year. Instead of only one round of semi-finals, the enemies are split this year. Nine will compete today for three slots in the finals and nine will compete for the other three slots in a couple of days. The official reasoning for this is that the Mushroom Broadcasting Union wants to avoid unreal reasonably long semi-final videos. Though I have the strong suspicion they only do this in order to be able to play more ads. Anyway, today the Magic Hoopers, the Forms, the Hammer Bros, the Buzzy Beetles, the Spineys, the Koopas, the Bloopers, the Cheap Cheeps and the Bob Arms will present their ideas. And in the end, you wonderful ladies and gentlemen watching this from home will have to decide which three of these nine should be allowed to compete for the title in the grand final and which six starters have to stay at home. So are you ready? Let's do this! Since the Cheap Cheeps won last year's competition, they are allowed to present the first design this year. Their design is an interesting combination of two different dangerous list of evil entries. They present a boss fight where Mario is neither allowed to turn around nor to jump. If our poor plumber decides to turn around here, then the ceiling disappears and the dangerous muncher ceiling drops onto our brave plumber's head. And if he decides to jump, then the same thing happens. So Mario's only chance to survive here is to dodge the evil cheap cheap snake by using a conveyor belt. That's a pretty cool start for the tournament. But I can't help myself. This entry feels like they played it a little bit too safe. I mean, all data shows that the viewers at home like the dangerous list of evil, so the cheap cheeps decided to combine two designs and then threw some cheap cheeps into it. That's a little bit cheap, if you ask me, but the audience at home will have the last say here. Next up are the Spineys. They haven't been in a final before, even though they almost made it last year. This year, they present us an underwater idea. That's pretty brave of them. Underwater levels usually aren't that popular, but it makes sense for the Spineys to do this since their underwater behavior is really unique. When Spineys find themselves at the bottom of the ocean, they don't try to swim around like most spike turtles would, but instead they do the hedgehog and roll themselves in. Here Mario has to dodge dangerous hedgehog Spineys, while other winged spinies shoot dangerous spiky spikes into the arena. That's cool, but the really unique thing here is the way the timer works. Instead of using one of the classic old school timer designs, the spinies decided to use their unique underwater properties to create a silly, overcomplicated timer contraption. To the left here are five stacked pipes containing big spinies. These pipes constantly spawn more and more spinies, so that the small corridor becomes really crowded. After a while, it becomes so crowded that the spinies start to push themselves closer and closer towards the P-switch. Once the spiny hits the switch, the switch becomes really triggered and the exit door opens up. Hooray! Okay, so now it's time for the Hammer Bros. Hammer Bros are really bad losers. They weren't able to reach the final before, but instead of blaming themselves, they started to argue that the whole election process was rigged against them, which is clearly absurd. Anyway, this year they tried to convince the voters at home by showing a silly Fire Flower minigame that works with almost every enemy in the game and not only specifically with Hammer Bros. Just saying. Here Mario has to time his Fire Flower Fire Power power ups really careful. Mario desperately wants to hit the Hammer Bro here, but Mario not only wants to hit the Hammer Bro because, you know, it's a hammer bro. No, he also wants to hit the hammer bro because if his fire flower fire power power ups fail to hit the hammer bro three times in a row, then the floor collapses and our plumber drops into his doom. Hmm. So as it turns out, Mario needs to throw his fireballs really well timed here because if he actually manages to hit the evil hammer bro, then he's rewarded with a key and able to leave. Hooray! The counting mechanism that destroys the floor once Mario missed his third shot should be pretty self-explanatory. If this muncher drops down, the piece which is triggered. Awesome. But let's face it, the muncher and the piranha plants are doing all the work here. The hammer bro is just jumping around and throwing his silly hammer. Next up are the Koopas. I already saw the idea they prepared yesterday during the channel rehearsal and it looked incredibly boring to be honest. All they prepared is a small corridor with a couple of Koopas in it. I have no idea what they were thinking. That's so bad. It could be Hammer Bros. But wait, why did the floor just collapse? 
Oh, I see there is a twist in this design. That's actually a speedrun challenge. The floor here collapses after exactly 10 seconds. It looks like the Coopers found a way to create a global timer. Okay, that's cool. So this time Mario is fast enough and actually manages to reach the end in time. So how does this work? Well, it's surprisingly simple. There is a big Koopa on top of fire bars, hidden out of sight. Fire bars are global ground, so this Koopa never despawns. After almost exactly 10 seconds, the Koopa triggers the P-switch and the floor collapses. Awesome. The Buzzy Beetles are next. They are desperate to make it into the finals this year, since they almost won the competition in the first year, but completely bombed last year. They prepared a boss fight against Bowser Jr. in a dangerous arena. The floor constantly cycles up and down here, while the air to the Koopa front shoots dangerous fireballs towards Mario. Our plumber needs to be super careful here, since there are outchain spikes which threaten to poke our hero. That's really dangerous. Is, is this it? Is this the first time that Bowser Jr. actually defeats Mario? Well, no. Which brings us scoreboard to Bowser Jr. 0, Mario 1031. Okay, so that were the Buzzy Beetles. I really liked the dramatic music which the Buzzy Beetles played during their performance, but I'm not sure if this design is good enough to convince the audience at home to vote for them. Next up are the Magic Hoopas. Their performance features a two-phase boss battle in clown cars. So Mario finds himself here in a really awkward situation. He's entrapped in a horrific room, the ceiling and the floor are made out of ouching saw blades and there is a dangerous saw blade on tracks which tries to cut him as well. To make matters even worse, there is also a Magic Hoopa which shoots dangerous PlayStation button missiles towards our brave plumber. Meanwhile, Mario has to pilot a clown car, since the clown car is the only thing that separates his body from the saw blades at the bottom. That's a really horrible situation. I wouldn't wish for my worst enemy to find himself in such an encounter. But Mario is able to manage all the different threats at once. Wow. After a while, a hidden shellmet timer expires and the Magic Koopa enters the arena. Now it's a one versus one boss battle. Mario actually manages to steal the exit key, which this dangerous Magic Koopa was carrying, and manages to escape. Hooray! Only three performances are left, before it is finally time for you wonderful ladies and gentlemen to vote for your favorites. Now it's time for the bloopers. They try something new. They try to recreate the blooper item from Mario Kart Wii. They try to block Mario's view from the action on screen. Here Mario is entrapped in a small room. Bowser himself is spitting burning magma balls towards Mario, while a couple of saw blades try to cut him. That wouldn't be too bad on its own if it wasn't for the fact that tons of bloopers get defeated at the top and limit Mario's view. Wow, that's cool. It, it's not revolutionary or anything, but the bloopers clearly try to come up with something interesting. It's going to be interesting to find out whether the audience at home likes this idea. Now it's time for the Bob Arms entry. The Bob Arms built a small reflex goalie minigame. The bullet blasters constantly spit Bob Arms into the arena. Mario needs to react fast here. His job is to bounce all the walking boom bots that enter the room towards the top. So. Why would Mario go through the trouble of jumping whenever a Bob Omp enters the arena, you might ask? Well, first because it's fun, but most of all because it is required to survive. If Mario misses a Bob Omp, then a Bob Omp drops onto this conveyor belt and goes boom, which sadly makes the floor go away and creates a horrific fall into the abyss for Mario. Mario's only chance to survive here is by jumping three times at the right time, because if three Bob Omps end up on the conveyor belt at the top, then the exit door opens up. Hooray! And now, now it's time for the last entry of the first semi-finals. It's time for the Thwomps. The bookmakers actually think that the Thwomps have the best chance to make it into the finals today. And I have to admit I agree, because the Thwomps actually found a way to create a mechanism that is able to globally donut overflow the ELB, which is like the coolest thing ever. Okay, so this setup here fills the ELB as soon as it is loaded once and never despawns, which means that this setup, which only uses 4T entity limit A entities, is able to globally fill the ELB, because of this we are able to control the ELB count easier than ever before. So check this out, here we first load in all the forms. This globally donut overflows the ELB for 97. Then Mario faces the legendary Mole Knight. Yep, that's what he looks like. What an epic rematch. The Mole, the Blaster, the Koopa and the Hidden Door all count towards the ELB here. Which brings it up to 101. Once the Mario defeated the legendary Mole Knight, the ELB is back to 99, which allows the Blaster to shoot and the Vine to grow. In the next room, Mario is forced to fight against the legendary Mole Knight's brother, the even more legendary 
Bro Knight. Once again, the entity limit reaches 101 here. And once again, it hits 99 once the super legendary Bro Knight is defeated, which once again grows the exit vine and allows Mario to finally reach the area where the exit door would be if I hadn't forgotten to place it. Oh. Sorry, Mario. So what that means is that this simple setup is able to fill the ELB globally while still having enough open ELA spots to actually build a level afterwards. We'll have a lot of fun with this in the future. But is this design enough to enter the finals? Well, it's time to find it out because now it's time to vote. So only three out of our six starters are able to reach the grand final. Every one of you watching this has exactly three votes. Just put the name of your three favorite starters into a comment starting with an exclamation mark. Voting will be up for about a week. I used the search function to find out which three enemies got the most votes. Just be careful to use the correct spelling when voting. The correct voting names are currently on screen and they're in the description and they were pinned in the comment section alongside an example vote. The second semi-final will take place in a couple of days. I hope you enjoyed this little video. If you enjoyed it, don't forget to leave me a thumbs up. And maybe you feel especially hyped for the finals today and wanted the subscribe button as well. I hope that you have a wonderful day and to see you soon. Goodbye.